with this soil here, okay? He grew up with it and he understood it and he, he loved it really. The neighbors farming out here, they made their living off the soil, okay? And it was something that they appreciated and, and cared for a lot. I know when that, uh, you know, that little bend in the creek there took away a couple of yards of dirt there, wherever it was, uh, my dad, we wouldn't allow that. We, we'd be, uh, we wouldn't be able to sleep thinking of something like that would happen, taking that top soil off and stuff like yeah, that. Really the ten, ten salmon holes would not be uncommon here. In this spot here. And then they lived in the pools, okay, but they didn't live here. But this is where it's a spot for spawning. At night, is when they'd all be out spawning, or you can see them in the holes too. You just shine the light in there, you can see them. Because sometime during the day, they'd be underneath the, the roots of the bed of the, of the creek, okay, and you wouldn't see them. Although they'd be spawning during the day and stuff yeah, like that. I remember when I was working up in the hill up there, I'd come down with the D4 or whatever tractor I had, and they had no trees here. And you can see them spawning along here. Half a dozen of them would be, you know, making their beds and stuff. To, mm -hmm. You can see them splashing the waters. Uh, where you had holes like this here, there would be the steelheads be stuck in there. They'd yeah. be stay there all summer. And something else, they used to spawn down over there too. I haven't seen them spawn there in seven, eight, ten over, years. Over where? Farther down. Uh -huh. All the way down to like the... Like along your driveway down there? Yeah, but even one. along here, you would go by the road there and you could see the, the salmon spawning. Mm -hmm. And you, you can tell where they're spawning. You can yeah. see where there's a hole or something, yeah, they okay? Dig, they, dig, they, they, dig. they dig a nice hole and stuff. I haven't seen them spawn there for many years. In 1980, the National Park Service acquired the property, but the farming continued until 1995. After the farming ended in 1995, the National Park Service had the opportunity to, to do some restoration of the creek adjacent to the former farm area, to learn more about the coho and what we could do, and actually take some actions to manage this area as a national park that protects natural resources. Why we're here today is to cut branches from those willows next week are going to be pulled up. A bulldozer will be coming to start regrading the stream bank. Obviously the first thing to go will be the plants that are growing now on this very steep stream bank, including many, many arroyo willows. After we cut this stream bank back to the stakes, these poles are going to be laid on the bank with the end in the water and then this is actually laying on the bank and they'll be laid down right next to each other to like make a um, shield for the stream bank. We want to avoid damaging uh, any salmon while we're doing construction. We're required to move them. So our first process is actually to, to um, establish nets at two ends of the project area. And then we go out and we drag sangs through the water. And uh, um, you basically just get them as deep as you can. You have somebody on either end and uh, sweep them through the area. And if there are a lot of fish in there, when you pull that net up on the gravel bar, you'll see them all flopping around there in the net on the gravel bar and all the volunteers then work really fast to try to pick up the fish really gently and put them in a bucket that's aerated um, so that we can relocate them. In the eroded bank, we ended up catching almost 700 steelhead. The water was very deep. It was one of the best pools around and they really had co congregated around there and the number actually su surprised us. Um, when we when we collect them, we're required then to move them upstream and to put no more than 10 in any other pool up there because they're territorial. And so with the huge number of fish that we actually had, we were re relo relocating fish from the project area a good you know, four or five miles upstream all the way into Muir Woods. The exception actually to our large numbers was when we removed fish in the bowling alley. And when we, when we netted the ends of the bowling alley off and sang there and then actually followed up with electro fishing, we never found a single coho. Part of uh, protecting the downstream habitat while construction is going on, we dewater the creek so that we're not creating really muddy conditions in the water downstream of the project area. So the water has to be pumped out of the creek 